What is going on? I'm Zed Mott. Today is Gren Med Mania. We've got that for two days, eight more hours. That could change depending on when you view this video. We are going to go through Gren Med Mania. Now, I realize we have the Crater Cannons, but we're going to ignore those for a minute simply because Gren Med is fantastic all day, every day. Now, I'm on an XP43 account. But we will be switching partway through and using a max level account just to show this is not just for low levels. This is one of the strongest possible troops to clear your map with. Now, Bombardiers have made Grenadiers kind of second fiddle for a little while. But nonetheless, we are going to cruise through all of the things and just show you how ridiculously versatile these troops are. Now, at XP43, nothing will get in your way. If we drop Everspark first, right about here, we're going to drop all of our Grenadiers afterwards. Throw one shock just in case, just to let those critters start pumping out. Let our Grenadiers start doing some clearing. And then we're going to use our Barrage back here on these Boom Cannons. And then we could close the game right now. That is how good Grenadiers are. The fact that they miss... When people first get Grenadiers, they think, well, these troops suck because they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. But, but, look at this. See that machine gun behind that sniper tower? Gone. Flamethrower behind? Also gone. So, these guys miss, but they miss in fantastic, fantastic ways. Getting rid of all sorts of defenses. That boom cannon that's behind all that stuff, probably going to be gone by the time we get to it, just like predicted. Need to throw a shock out there so we don't lose a troop. Now, as a general rule, 99.9% .9 of the time, your Grenadiers will not outrange sniper towers. There are times when they will. You'll be attacking, like getting the shield generators on Fang or something like that, and you'll have one Grenadier that will somehow find that perfect 43.7% angle, and they will outrange a sniper tower, but do not bank on it. They will not do it as a general rule. And um, kind of like how Zookas will bunch up and get ruined by flamethrowers, Grenadiers will bunch up and get ruined by cannons. So um, I will show you a trick to avoid that in a moment here, but overall, all you have to really do is watch the edges and make sure none of them go too far forward. Now, if they do go for too far forward, that's the answer right there. Throw one smoke slightly ahead of your troops, cover part of them, and you're going to keep that front, front Grenadier safe for a second or so. This guy is not in harm's way, thankfully, but in the event they do pull forward, you can save them using one smoke. Now, the other option, of course, of course, of course, is smoking Grand Medic to the back of a base, but there's a lot of things to be worried about there, things to be careful about there. So for mid to low levels, don't even worry about smoke. Just crush bases from the front. No need to worry about anything. Low level bases don't have enough boom cannons or high enough level sniper towers to stop your Gren Medics. So what I'm going to do is I will show you a smoke to the back, assuming we get a base that is compatible. This one is definitely not. But what we can do, you don't have to smoke to the back. That was kind of a perfect little segue. You can just go over to the side somewhere in here. And what that's going to do is that's going to avoid their entire minefield. And it's going to set you up so they're throwing against that gold storage. And if they can throw against a gold storage or throw against a flamethrower, you're going to guarantee that your troops are safe because gold storages don't shoot back as a surprise, surprise kind of moment. So there, look at that, like gold storage up front actually working to our benefit because it's keeping our troops off of all of the things. And now we can just use our gunboat energy at our leisure. Probably should save a shock for when we get close to these sniper towers and cannons and things just to be on the safe side. Maybe didn't need it, but we've got nothing else to use our gunboat energy on because that boom cannon and that shock launcher both died at the hands of our potato mashers. By the way, these gren the, gr the grenades that bought Grenadiers throw are called potato mashers in case you wanted a little bit of World War something or other trivia. And again, the vault keeping our troops off, letting our critters get up close and personal with that cannon. And then watching the number of critters we have, we'll throw a shock just because. Now, a lot of people like to use Kavan with their Grenadiers. I don't. I am all about Everspark at the low levels. 
Crater Swarm can be a great, great option. Personally, I like the Universal Remote, though, because you'll get somewhere like this, and you'll have a boom cannon off to the side that's causing you some problems. Don't really need Eversparks ability until you get close to the core at which point you can go hack something. So Eversparks passive critters should be all you need. Now, as you see there, Everspark pulled the medics into harm's way. So um, generally speaking, grenadiers do overthrow though. So those critters you see right there, not having any problem staying alive because grenadiers are throwing over their heads. That is two bases that have been somewhat higher levels. I can't remember exactly what levels they were. That was a level 49. That was a level 47 four to six levels higher with zero losses. Generally speaking, you can clear your entire map with no losses. This person is a level 52. We're going to go crush them slim. I mean, they've got high level snipers. We need to be a little bit aware of that. But their shock launcher and boom cannons are way over there. So this residence right here is going like these two residences. Now, I said I was going to show you how to keep your cannon, your grenadiers from bunching up on cannons. This kind of drop right here. Anytime I see someone attack Fang and they're using a flare to drop their Grenadiers, you know they're not entirely sure what the heck they're doing. Or it's one of those like 0.01% bases where something is slightly different. So use flag drops, don't use flares, and you'll get your Grenadiers spread out nice and wide. That will make them not bunch up. And as you see over here, that right-hand side sniper tower, gonzo. So now we can bring our troops over into here with the full knowledge that they are going to bunch up on that cannon, going to have some problems. Not entirely sure why I hadn't dropped Everspark yet, probably because I was too worried about talking about how to drop Grenadiers. But now that we've got our critters out front, don't really need to worry about that cannon. Just cruising through this entire base, please give Grenadiers a shot. They are one of the most underrated troops in Boom Beach. <clears throat> Anytime we did some sort of um, PvP base challenge on Reddit or something like that, Grenadiers were always the troop that won, and they ended up being banned in many, many instances. Because you never lose a troop unless you do something stupid, which I tend to do something stupid, especially when I'm recording and talking and sipping my first coffee of the morning. So I am full up on excuses as to why I'm about to lose a troop, but we shouldn't, in theory, lose anything any except for on that far far side so what we're going to do is throw a smoke right about there keep those grenadiers safe keep the medics safe and bob's your uncle just crushing this base no problem at all your medics don't have to be a high level your grenadiers don't have to be a high level you just need some troops and i at level eight at hq 18 can clear my map without any issues with level one grenadiers now the higher level you have, the more health they have, which means that when they happen to get hit by a sniper tower or a rocket launcher, you can quit, have a little bit of time to react. Um, basically, once your troops can get hit by a mortar or a sniper tower without dying, you're good to go. So just keep, a, keep an eye on that. Mortars and sniper towers are going to be a bit of a problem. We picked up a crystal there. I'm going to switch, to, you know what, first I'm going to show you smoking them to the back because hopefully we can find a base that is compliant with that. I have so many resources, it's ridiculous because there are some huge, huge problems with smoking grenadiers and this one is a perfect base. So um, one thing that I like to do when I'm smoking grenadiers, I like to start my smoke here start my grenadiers walking and then everspark is only one troop so she gets underneath smoke incredibly quickly so use your smokes like that and then we're gonna drop all of our stuff and get them walking i believe we've already lost a troop or two don't want that now we're gonna let our grenadiers get hit by a rocket launcher by smoking them a little bit late that is gonna get the medics kicked into high gear Going to do the exact same thing right about now. Let those Grenadiers take a little bit of damage. It will get your Grenadiers walking. Not your Grenadiers. It will get your Medics walking because the worst thing possible is when your Medics get stuck at the beach just kind of hanging out, having a little tea party. There are some innuendos that we could use for what they're doing at shore, but we're going to avoid that for the moment. Apparently, I clicked the hack button at shore. Don't entirely know why that was the case. But um, if there's some sort of tight little spot where you're going to put your Grenadiers, realize that they are going to throw their... They're going to play hot potato with their potato mashers. So they will kill each other. So 
if there's any sort of tight spot where you're going to put them, make sure you clear those buildings using your GBE. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad, bad time, and your grenadiers are going to kill themselves and or their medics, and it's not going to be a good time. So. Um, smoking Grenadiers is definitely a next level strategy because you have to worry about your medics and you have to worry about where they're going to end up and all that sort of stuff. So do give it a shot, but realize that it could go terribly, terribly wrong and it's not really required for low levels because as you've seen, zero troops lost across this entire video so far. We are now going to switch it up. I need to upgrade something. Holy crow. Let's see what our sculptor is going to bring us. Garbage. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and load some Zookas in this boat right here. And then we're going to upgrade it. I always, always load Zookas in my landing craft before I upgrade it. And the reason for that is that way if I ever do an operation attack, I am ready for troops. Because there's nothing worse than that player who says, Oh, I've only got seven landing crafts because I got one upgrading. Just throw Zookas in there. That way, it's way cheaper to diamond finish Zookas in one landing craft than it is to diamond finish an entire landing craft when your operation attack comes up. So stick around. We'll do some high, max level goodness back in just a second. Okay, max, max level. Kind of cool how it has that Zedmot logo burning into the screen with the Zedmot up in the top corner. Speaking of Zedmot, do consider throwing it into your creator boost. Basically, anytime I think about it, I come in, I unsubscribe, then resubscribe, because seven days is full-on ridiculoso. That sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Next up, we are going to get rid of the Bombardiers. Now, you can bring Bombardiers into the mix. I like to bring one or two of them into the mix with my Grenadiers because you get a little bit more damage, especially against bases that have shield gens and some ice. We are not going to be doing that today. Now, the other thing we could be doing here is we could, in theory, leave the Critter Cannons. You know what? Let's leave one boat of Critter Cannons because Critter Cannons are fantastic and why the heck not? Now, we are going to bring some medics as well. We're going to go something like this and we are going to use Bullet. Now, Bullet with his energy drink is fantastic for Grenadiers. It takes a little bit more skill though simply because Bullet can end up dying and or pulling your medics forwards. So they've got a Shock Blaster on the right. This base, holy, I just got an XP 48. So I am going to drop all of my troops over here, and then we're just going to watch because I don't think I need to use any gunboat energy at all. Max level Grenadiers with all red and purple statues should have absolutely zero issues clearing this entire, entire base. Critter Cannons bringing in some extra oomph. Now, the reason why I'm using one boat of Critter Cannons is because we get two of them. One Critter Cannon on its own is fairly useless, but the Critter Cannons, in theory, should open up Bullet here in a second. That Shock Blaster might take some of our Grenadiers, but I really don't care. I'm going to let my troops die at this point, because this person is doing fairly well as an XP 48, getting their victory points up and Anytime someone has red and purple statues and is doing the right things, I'm going to throw some GBE on my troops, give them some intel and some diamonds and say, hey, you're doing all the right things. So Empaniri Elv, well done to you. Let's try and get a real base to actually attack, though. So we're going to claim that. Let's just see. Not going to claim that chest because I should be able to get up to 670 on this map clear, which means that I'm likely going to get a few extra resources. So do keep an eye on your victory points versus your supply chest. Let's go find a level 71 and just no scout attack them. Hopefully, yep, they've got some shock blaster and two damage amplifiers, which is going to be fantastic. I'm going to drop like this crater cannons next in behind and then all of our grenadiers. Now, I probably should have held off on dropping my medics because they're going to run forward and go see what Bullet's up to, which is never a good time. Excuse me. But um, we're just going to keep the critters pumping. Get all of this stuff cleaned out. Bullet's going to just absolutely tank all of the shots to the dome. And our troops are just going to clear in behind them. Like, it just... these This troop combo is so, so underrated. Please do give it a shot. You will not be disappointed if you need any sort of pointers on what you're doing wrong, because there are all sorts of things people can do wrong with these troops, please do let me know. Would love to 
have a look at your attacks, let you know what's going on. And of course, the easiest way to do that is if you're actually in our task force group. Now you see Bullet likes to draw all of these medics forward, which puts them in harm's way. So you have to be aware of that. Bullet is the best hero for Grenadiers, but personally, I prefer using Everspark just because you don't lose as many troops because your medics don't run forward. We have lost two Grenadiers, and I don't think we would have lost any if we had ever sparked. Now, the other option, of course, is Kavan with his second wind. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep just pumping out all sorts of riflemen. But I find with Kavan and his second wind, those riflemen are going to pull your medics forward. They're also going to pull Kavan forward, and you can end up losing troops that way as well. So this is not exactly a great example because I do don't use bullet. The best time to use bullet is when you have troop health on your account, and I think I even have troop health because for Mega Crab, but um, I just find that with bullet I end up losing a couple troops here and there, and with Everspark I lose zero, with Kavan I lose a couple, but generally speaking, bullet is the best. I just don't have the skills to use him for whatever reason. So now we're going to get rid of the medics. We can get rid of one boat of medics because we have Kavan. And then we're going to bring in one extra boat of Critter Cannons, because why the heck not? And let's just go. We're going to go like this. We're going to drop Kavan and our Medics, and they can just start some Critters coming out, and then we'll drop all the rest. Now, you don't have to worry about any defenses at shore, except for Boom Cannons and Prototypes. Um, the old... the Mortars, sniper towers, cannons, nothing ranges grenadiers, so you can just drop your troops without having to worry about them at all. Again, except for boom cannons, doom cannons, um, range defenses like rocket launchers and shock launchers, and of course if your troops bunch up due to those ridiculous, ridiculous cannons. So um, we have lost troops already. Again, I just think that Everspark is best because her critters keep your troops alive. In those gaps between critter cannons, we would not have lost a troop, I don't think. But this is one of the few troop combos that works with basically every possible hero, which can't be said for others. Now, Brick, not exactly ideal, but you know what? You can have some fun with Brick as well, especially if you're smoking to the back of the base, because when those troops pop out of smoke, it's just an absolute, absolute blast of goodness. We will actually do one more attack using our good friend Brick and hopefully do some good, good stuff because this is not a great way to end off because we are getting absolutely pummeled after I told you that you'll never lose a troop using Gren Medic because I am frankly not awake yet and I have not slept in months due to my shoulder, so I am full of excuses. I love making excuses these days so nonetheless crushing 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 and as you can see here those boom cannons not going to be able to range our troops grenadiers will take them out bit by bit so do use these troops please let me know if you're going to use them if you've used them now as far as some operation attacks they're fantastic for um fang is the number one then i think it's paradox where you can smoke to the back and throw Grenadiers, grenades over the top. Also, um, I believe you can solo tapir with grenadiers most times. Now let's get rid of these ridiculous, ridiculous critter cannons, as fun as they are and as fantastic as they are. Um, I've heard nothing but amazing feedback from everyone saying that they absolutely love the critter cannons, but we're going to go find a level 71. Hopefully that we can smoke to the back of most level 71s tend to have that front loaded base like this person. So we are going to leave these mines right here. These mines are going to do all sorts of damage to our troops, but that's going to be helpful because it's going to allow our grenadiers to get where they need to go. It's also going to help our medics chase after our grenadiers after they take a little bit of damage from those mines. So now that that's done, we are going to flare all the way back back there. Let our Grenadiers get out front, then we're going to drop our Medics because we don't want our Medics to hit those mines, or they're just going to hang out at the shore, which is not going to be awesome at all. So you see those Medics instantly start chasing after your Grenadiers. 
Now, just be aware that your medics will take a slightly, slightly different path than your grenadiers because they're chasing a troop as opposed to going to a flare. Now, if you're wondering why I threw this final smoke, it's because they're going to throw towards those residences, and what's going to happen is your grenadiers are going to absolutely murder all of your medics. It is not going to be a pretty, pretty scene, so do throw that last smoke, or at least be aware that your grenadiers likely want to murder those medics. It happens every time. Now, we are going to have to be a little bit careful because they've got two max level lasers here and those critters are definitely going to be attracting the laser beams. So once we get close to the core, we can shock two boom cannons and two lasers and two and the shock launcher. So that's a super, super high value shock. Going to be able to do all sorts of good stuff with that as we pump out some critters using the Eversparks Critter Swarm ability. Now, nothing should be able to range our troops. We're just going to clear absolutely everything around this core. You see that boom cannon's gone, the shock launcher's gone, that laser's about to be gone. Grenadier's missing just does so, so much goodness. And as you can see here, smoking to the back of the base also just opens up everything. This base is so front-loaded, we ended up using their mines to our advantage and cruising through everything with zero troops lost. So that's a far, far better way to end our attack. Now, I likely will be putting out a weekend edition of Warships simply because I skipped the Warships video today to bring you Gren Med Mania. But otherwise, let me know if you're using Grenadiers, if you're using them with Critter Cannons, and on top of that, tell me how much you absolutely love Critter Cannons, because I know you do every single... If you don't like them, actually, if you don't like Critter Cannons, please let me know, because I have heard from zero people that don't like them. So I'm trying to fill up my raw crystals here, sending my submarine on the dive, picking up the diamonds, all of those daily tasks that I hope all of you are doing. And then I'm going to get my VP up to 5, 670 and claim that chest. Otherwise, it's Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. I shall talk to you soon. Thanks for coming in. I'm Zedmon. Peace.